was one heck of an intro. I've always kept it real with you guys. So here's another video of the UCC truck. As you can see, everything's apart. Um, we had to pull the cylinder head off. We had an issue, so it was really weird. Um, went on the dyno and no issues, right? Uh, we had a couple few issues. It made 12, 1300 horsepower, no problems. Finally, we turned on the sauce 2184 horsepower and drove off the trailer just fine drove up to the trailer just fine drove onto the trailer just fine came home six hours later fired up the truck backing it down on the ramp about halfway down dave stopped me so i was sitting at an incline for i'd say about a minute maybe tops and when it started doing that i started shooting coolant out of the overflow bottle so i was like oh that's weird but you know, I kind of thought maybe with the way we were kicked, the water pump, yada, yada, I thought, okay, maybe it's just that. So um, I kind of discarded it. And then Ethan came. You guys, uh, I'll put that footage in right here. So we now have the PCS installed. So instead of going to manual first, now we just pull this sucker right in the third there and it should do everything itself. Ready? But uh, Ethan um, was here and we had the truck up on jack stands to check the PCS and all of a sudden coolant started shooting out. And I was like, dang. So we hooked up, you can't really feel a, a, a steel braided line for if it's firm or not. So we hooked up a coolant pressure gauge, fired it up, instantly started making coolant pressure. So I knew we had some kind of a head gasket issue it had barely started to kind of put like the vapor into the um, like oil. So I'm not really worried about bearings or anything like that, but it was clear we had a head gasket or a cracked head, cracked block, something of that nature. Um, and the longer I let the truck sit there, the worse it got. So heat seemed to be a big factor in that. So I went ahead and pulled it all apart. Um, I've told you guys from the get go, it's not easy doing this. And these are some of the failures that happen um we're gonna put it back together um i think what i'm gonna do is i did two hot retorks but the second one i don't i didn't have a chance to drive it i just spooled it up twice and called it good loaded it on the trailer so i think what i'm gonna do to rectify this issue is i'm going to put the head on torque it get it hot no coolant torque it and then just go do a couple of like test hits on the street 20 30 pounds boost torque it and then maybe check it one more time after that maybe with the deck plate or the head or the head studs we're using whatever maybe that's causing an issue so um i know where it blew kind of how it blew if this happens again what i will do is probably just pull the coolant out and let the truck just kind of 
blow compression into the uh, cooling jacket. If it happens at UCC or anything like that, we'll just run it dry. Um, but it's always good to investigate it. That way you kind of know generally where it blows once, it might do it again. So I don't know if that's like a weak spot of the block, weak spot of the head. I don't know, I'm gonna flip flop the head stud so the same one doesn't end up there. But basically we will put it all back together. I'm gonna check and make sure everything's flat, obviously straight edge, feeler gauges um, on both the head and the block. But uh, yeah, no issues here. Uh, just, you know, regular 2000 horsepower maintenance. Uh, so we're looking at the aftermath of Dave's. Uh, ooh. <laughs> Damn, it got me good. <laughs> dude, that looks like the one in the UCC truck. You'll be fine. <laughs> weld it up. Uh, dude, I didn't even weld mine. Mine's like paper thin through here. It, you don't have a mid. Mine is very thin. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have a mid plate. It'll be fine. Ooh, it came through on this, too. Put your head back here. Be careful, it's sharp, though. <laughs> it's all right. I wouldn't even replace it. I really... Ooh. Oh, bonus. So there's... We found five, so we're just missing one. It's probably still mm. in. That looks like aluminum. What's this right there? So we're just missing one. It's pretty good. We found five. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. And this is, uh... This is the flex plate. Um, Dave said it's so good. There's six holes that are good. So I guess for sale, hundred bucks. Buy or pay shipping. Okay, so we looked at the head. We looked at the block. Um, I messaged Steve about the flatness check that we had. We had about two thousandths, give or take, um, where the head had warped a little bit. The block had less than like a thousand. So I know the block's good. So all I'm gonna do now is just WD-40, the surface of the block, um, suck out all the coolant with a vacuum, and probably just put a trash bag over this stuff to keep it clean for the time being while I figure out if I need to surface this or not and wait on some head studs, because I think, I don't know. We'll, we'll see, but anyway, that's where we're at. Blown head gasket right here. You guys look you can kind of see it right there blue went into that coolant passage right there so we're going to weigh a couple options um one option i thought of is just drilling and tapping that coolant passage for an eighth inch mpt plug plugging it then if it does blow there again we don't have to worry about it pressurizing the coolant the other option is to just run it dry for ucc but anyway you guys can kind of see let me reset the camera you guys can see in that cylinder wall, they're, they all pretty much look the same. Not too bad. Kind of what you'd expect in a 2000 horse engine. Nothing crazy. I don't see any bad scuffs, nothing like that. All the piston bowls look nice. Um, no melting, nothing like that. Just some, some carbon buildup right there. But yeah, everything looks nice and clean as I'd expect. No witness marks from valves, so I am happy. guys just a, we were at new performance auto they got this all machined all while they're still trying to fill it, fix their pole truck so as always huge thank you to steve burton julie they squeezed us in um got some customer stuff done too and our head is now back in action let's go back to the shop and put it on and we are back i tell you what at first i hated this bed cover but it has become quite useful living in Virginia, transporting stuff that can't get wet. But we are back. Again, huge thank you to Steve, Julie, JL, Matt. Dusty wasn't there today, but he works there too. For getting us in there, taking care of the issue. Um, we found that that head was warped. I got you guys a little bit of footage, but 
to be honest, I really don't like being in Steve's way when he's trying to machine. I just, I don't know. I feel like he gets irritated. So anyway, um, yeah, he basically surfaced it, recut the fire rings and uh, sent me on my way. Now I do have to clean this. Uh, so what I do is I just basically break clean air, break clean air until I'm satisfied. We have our fresh head gasket here with the copper coat on it. I don't know if the copper coat actually helps, but it definitely makes me feel cooler. So we do that. And we already got our block essentially prepped, so to speak, um, right here. I'll just wipe it off, get the WD-40 off there. But yeah, that uh, that's done. And again, just look at those beautiful cylinders, guys. So I don't know how far we're gonna get tonight. Um, kind of tired and uh, yeah, had a Duramax taken apart. Also, if any of you guys have any better ideas, so right now, Dave and I lay like a piece of wood over the back where the cabs go to leave everything kind of organized, you know, like we got the pig mat, exhaust, intake, uh, valve cover, upper and lower, rocker box, push rods, and then we kind of lay that stuff out. We also have the bolt trays that are labeled with paint marker. Um, and it's not a bad system, but if you guys have any better ideas on this other than what we're doing, I'm all ears because we're, I'm going to have to get some more bolt trays. This is the first time we've ever had two cabs up at the same time. Um, this six liter, unfortunately needs new heads because the heads had already been machined and they got too thin. Um, yes, if you have studs or a bulletproof six liter, it could still fail nothing is impervious to heat which is this one got overheated blew the head gaskets this was just a factory head bolt lbz um that suffered uh head gasket failure so originally i was going to be putting this back together tomorrow but it looks like i'm not going to be doing either of those i'll be doing a six seven power stroke turbo but yeah we work on them duramaxes power strokes and cummins i just find it really funny that we have two cabs up in the air and they're both not dodges. Dave's is just up there for a trans, but anyway, yeah, that's kind of the shop update there. But back to the matter at hand, fresh Hazley firing gasket. Um, we're getting kind of, getting kind of to the bottom of my stash though, unfortunately. So I'm gonna have to wait on back order, I guess, just like everybody else, but we'll just wipe this off with brake clean. I'm gonna get that cleaned up next part of this video you guys will see the head going back on i will spare you the semantics of putting it together um basically head gasket fire rings head um head studs torqued rocker arms push rods valve bridges set the lash uh all of our fuel stuff goes back on cp3 pump rail all the lines on this side the manifold stayed on and we will just roll right into single turbo fabrication. Um, and yeah, it should, should be great. So realistically for single turbo, we'll use this one and probably this one. And then we'll pull the second return out, cap it, and we'll cap this dash six line or just put a plug in it, probably cap it. It's a little easier, but that'll be our drag race setup with a single turbo. I can't wait to show you guys what we got. Um, and yeah, all the nitrous and all that stuff will stay. But my goal basically is by the weekend to have this back together so I can do the single turbo fabrication. That way we can get to the drag strip and get some test passes in. Also, I kind of touched on it earlier, but I want to touch on it again while it's fresh in my memory. Huge thank you to Ethan, <coughs> excuse me, Ethan Patterson over at WP Diesel. You guys know he helped us out with our 68 trans. He also came in clutch with this. <clears throat> I'll put a few clips of him in here, but he drove all the way out here. Excuse the mess. This is all the parts of the engine and stuff. I wanted to get him out of the way. He got us set up with a PCS uh, controller there. One of his valve bodies. So now when I put it in manual third, it's first, second, third overdrive lockups, all computer controlled. And the nice part is he modifies the valve body. So when it's in drive, in first gear, it's actually manual first, so the low reverse band is on. I am really looking forward to seeing what we can do with this. I hope I finally get to use my parachute. But again, huge thank you to him. Um, and 
His girlfriend Brittany was here. She hung out. Uh, I thank her as well for giving up some of her time with Ethan so he could work on the race truck. And if you guys don't know Ethan, never met Ethan, come see us at UCC. Uh, if you guys use the code Horse Torx Diesel, um, no, sorry, W O T Motorsports, uh, you actually save a little bit of money on your ticket and we get a little chunk of that. So that's kind of cool. But anyway, I'm going to get to work. You'll see this again once it's kind of almost all the way to all the way together. So here she sits, guys. All uh, put back together. Um, I got the air dog just sitting there priming. I got this turbo bolted on. Got this oil feed uh, blocked off. Got this one hooked up. Honestly, I just didn't want to listen to it. Just sit there and oh god, these things are so loud, straight piped, and I I might get some hate, but you know what? It's, it's loud. So let's get this girl fired up now. See how she sounds. All right, guys, I'm gonna go ahead, bang out a hot retorque, and then we should be good to start our single turbo fab. I'm gonna kill the power here. But yeah, you guys have watched me do it a million times. I'm gonna get that done, and then I'll show you the turbo we're putting on. So, new turbo. Um, only thing is we'll have to clock this clamp a little different because it does hit the housing there, but not a big deal. Anyway, new turbo. It is a S400 485 from forced inductions it is a 132 t6 back housing with just a regular turbine the reason why we went this route is i couldn't find any gt55s in the 91 to 98 millimeter range in time uh which kind of sucks but it is what it is so we're gonna do s 400s um we teamed up with ethan patterson anyway and he's very good at these and i know like paul cato has gone fast with them um, so I again, I don't think we're gonna win the drag race setup with this but Realistically if we can get below that 550 545 number with this turbocharger Which I've heard from a lot of people is totally doable. We'll go with this. Also if this turbo lets go we have a 491 a 488 and a 480 so it's very easy to replace these turbos and they're quite cheap compared to a Garrett now to get this to fit it's the same oil feed line from our GT55 HX82 compound setup, which is nice. And then basically you take the oil drain from the HX82, put it back there, hook it up, and then the HX or the GT55 stays there. We'll cap that, you plug that, and boom, it's done. Same manifold and everything. Um, I got it just kind of sitting in place. I wanted to see what it was gonna hit. We put the intercooler back in. Also, I had changed, uh, in the process of changing the oil, Anytime you blow a head gasket, there was some water in the oil. So we'll put some fresh hot shots secret in there um, with a new filter and we'll be good to go there. Um, and yeah, now we're gonna start, basically we need to make a pipe that goes from this uh, 485, excuse me, to this intercooler. And then I also think we might just steal the 07's intake pipe that kind of picks the intake over to here I think that'll probably be the easiest thing to do or at least measure this and figure something out but realistically like a 45 degree metal um 45 degree elbow or even just a uh 45 degree boot with a piece of metal to a filter will work and then the hood stack we're just going to put a flange on this here 90 90 90 up and actually Judging by the hood, we might actually just be able to 
90 over and then 90 up. So either way, it's only gonna be a four inch hood stack. Uh, we've done some testing on that. Four inch in this short of a run will be fine. So four inch is what this girl is going to get. Um, huge thank you to Cody Fisher at Firepunk. He got us our stainless rose flange. Um, and then I ordered all the rest of the stuff from Vibrant, the four inch piping that is. So anyway, I'm going to start laying this out, figure out this charge pipe here. Um, the big thing I wanted to make sure was that it was an easy changeover from a single on Friday to compounds on Saturday. So uh, I want to leave like this compound bracket. It'd be nice if we could just leave that bolted on. Don't have to take that on and off. And it looks like we will be able to, which is nice. Um, we also are going to work a little bit on making sure that the hood stack fits the hole well. And then, yeah, I mean, realistically, you pull this turbo off, pull that line off, flip it up here to the front, bolt the GT55 on, grab that line and that line, hook that up, put the HX82 on with this line that moves forward, and then unplug that, plug that in, and, and you're good to go. So should be fairly simple on all of that. We have made our intercooler pipe. Yes, this pipe is familiar. It's the same one that we use on the GT55. We just basically took two stainless Vanjin flanges. I cut like this very little rib off and stacked them together. You guys saw me weld it there. Um, nice and loose still on the clamps. Plenty of movement. We got about, I'd say an eighth of an inch um, between this one and then an eighth on here. Uh, so plenty of flex available um oil feed oil drain done charge pipe done the nice part about this too is we could put all of our nitrous um in this pipe we'll probably have to add one more jet here um, but we'll have essentially five places we can put it uh, which is nice uh, and then if we really get desperate we could also use this one up here in the intercooler now it's time to work on the hood stack again cody fisher got us this this piece here we got vibrant 90 so i'm gonna put the hood on figure out where this hole is and i'm hoping again that we can just 90 out of here and then 90 up but like anything that i try to do i'm sure it'll fight us some time has passed i figured i'd skip some of the tig welding but we got our four inch hood stack with our cross bolts this one clears the hood a lot nicer which is cool now for the wastegate pipes, they are going to kind of come off here and come out probably the fender. Um, I'll be honest, I'm not that good of a fabricator to be able to get them to go out that little hole. And plus there's two of them, but this one actually clears much, much nicer. Uh, just a little bit over a 90. And then we kind of cut this a little bit like that to bring the stack even further forward. And yeah. Charge pipe, hood stack, gate piping shouldn't shouldn't be too too bad. I'm gonna get the gates put on and see if the pipe, uh, any of the old stuff works, so we could save a little bit of work there. But getting it done slowly but surely, guys, is what it's all about. 
hood stack or sorry wastegate pipe number one is done so you just pull it forward hold on Just this a second here. There we go. There we go. And now you just pull it forward. Lift up. It's caught on the hood stack. Give me a sec. Alright, there's really nothing I can do on that hood stack because if we make it any shorter, then it'll go in there but this is wastegate pipe number one now that i know it clears i can actually tighten it um this tilt hood like i'm not gonna say it's not nice because working on stuff's really nice but trying to make hood stack pipes for this is an absolute nightmare due to already having holes I mean, you guys get it, but anyway, we got the one gate pipe going out the hood and then we got this one and basically it goes up and then it'll come back down over the tire. Really wasn't a lot of good spots to put the second one because that hole's really not big enough and uh, that hole, it just wasn't going to happen. So um, yeah, all in a night's work, just got to weld this down here, but that's it guys we got our air filter on oil feed oil drain hose or sorry intercooler pipe hood stack cross bolted wastegate pipe wastegate pipe and that's it hopefully you enjoyed uh this little segment and uh not everything goes perfect and sometimes we tear stuff up uh in the past it's been a lot more than a head gasket so i will take it um Again, huge thanks to Steve and Julie over at New Performance Auto and uh, Matt uh, for getting that head turned around really quick. I appreciate it. Um, and yeah, fresh head gasket, retorqued, ready to go. We have the PCS done for drag racing. We now have the single turbo set up for drag racing. We have all of our nitrous already done. So realistically, there's some few odds and ends. I'll probably do one more video before the racing, but we are going this weekend with ethan patterson to make sure this truck does what it should do but yeah that uh that's it head gasket repair single turbo and uh you know hopefully you guys have enjoyed this little snippet into ucc prep i know i did it last year i feel like this year i'm doing it a little better for you guys i'm certainly doing it a lot better for myself being able to dine on the super flow and have the time and just doing it a lot better i feel like hopefully we don't have any more melted pistons this year but you never know uh at this power level stuff tears up and uh at least you guys get to know that one person's willing to show everyone that it tore up uh for those of you guys that are doing it yourselves and you have these issues just know you're not alone not everybody wants to share they worry about their reputation this that and the other but at the end of the day everyone screws these up some people just don't want to talk about it but we already know i have no issues putting it out there for you guys like this video drop a comment down below subscribe if you are not already and as always guys i'll catch you on the next one